For our final assignment that I will grade, that's out of three points, instead of your final assignment, which is out of 10, that the class will grade through critique, this is the last thing where I prescribe you a certain way of making your images, right? And certain creative limitations. So here we are making an image entirely with a, an art technique called digital painting. If you remember back to our very beginning of the class, we went over kind of the four dominant digital art techniques. Digital painting is one of them. And what's great about digital painting in two dimensions is that it can be used to just directly change pixels in any way you want very intuitively, right? It's just you using the computer like it's paint and the brush and you replace pixels and make what you want. So you can do two different types of subject matter for this digital painting exercise. We are just getting introduced to it. You can do portraits, and they can be stylized in any way. Uh, this was kind of a caricature portrait I did for, for a colleague of their family. And instead of trying to do the whole body, because that can have its own challenges in digital painting, especially with things like anatomy and things that we don't go into as much as like a figurative drawing class would go into, I'm asking you to do portraits from the shoulders up, right? I don't recommend you do four of them. I recommend you, you try to do one of them. But a portrait basically means that you want to retain some sort of likeness, though you can stylize them heavily. And because we need likeness, you want photo reference. You want to be able to weigh it against objective reality. And the more photos you have, the easier that will be to actually be able to recognize if it looks like the person you're trying to make recognizable. The other subject matter you can do is an animal, any kind of animal, but I want you to do it from head to toe. I don't want there to be any cropped off section of that animal. And we're just going to do it on white backgrounds. We can always put in backgrounds later. Yeah, we're not at all constrained by your photo reference. Of course, of course, yes. Now, you can also use other inspirations besides just your photo. So like you would put into like a text generated prompt in AI, like we were talking about in our question of the day, what might I look like painted like, a, or what might this person look like painted by Andy Warhol? You know, we could use one of these. I have a link there that you can play with, just like just a free browser-based version. It's not super powerful, but it works. So let's see, Warhol painting of, who's a celebrity? Pedro All right, Pedro Pascal. He's so hot right now. Let's say uh, primary colors. Otherwise, it's just going to give me lots of photos of Pedro Pascal. I don't know how actually if this model was current enough to have enough reference of Pedro Pascal, but there'll be some. Oh, okay, it's got it. So it takes um, like up to a minute for this one, unless you want to pay. <laughs> but but if that's kind of what I'm after. What do I need as a digital artist? I need images of Pedro Pascal to reference, and I need images of Warhol paintings to think of like, what's the color? What's the composition like? What's the contrast? What are the focal points? So that's what I'm going to do. If I'm doing a portrait or an animal, I not only want reference of the, uh, this will be assignment seven, of my subject matter, I also want some stylistic reference. Well, there we go. So we have Warhol paintings of Pedro Pascal. And these can become your, your painting reference, right? You can be inspired by this. And then I think that one's probably one of the more successful ones. And it uses primary colors, at least yellow with its complements. Yellow, magenta, cyan. Oh, you know what's hilarious? Like sometimes... It will actually have artifacts from the social media pages, you know. 
that I pulled from, like little arrows for Instagram or something embedded into it. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that one's pretty good too. So that's a good way to start. Now, is this a finished digital painting? This does not work for the assignment, right? It does, doesn't show you what photos you're working from and it doesn't teach you anything, right? But it can inspire you. It can be a good ideation tool. I actually like this one quite a bit in the way it just kind of randomly tore off one color and put the other color on. It's like a, a torn billboard of uh, Andy Warhol. So you can actually go ahead and save the ones that you think are interesting and use them as inspiration. And this is becoming kind of a fancy term and a job in and of itself in the digital art world. This is called image curation because it takes a human in the loop to recognize what's valuable and what's not and what can be used to, to do variations from. But this is what I came up with. Let's see. So for you guys, I'm going to show a portrait and I'm going to do one of my favorite uh, musicians, Nina Simone. And I found all of these photos of Nina Simone and took these screenshots because it's good to have multiple just to show you. It's good to have their faces at slightly different angles. Some of it even includes like sketches, which obviously was taken from this photo, some other artwork, and then some painting, some contemporary kind of uh, What's that called? Palette knife, kind of scraped, polygonal, hard edge tape painting examples. Interesting palettes, interesting textures, things I want to get. Because you don't need to just paint photorealistically. And then I actually used AI and I used crayon to give me portraits of Nina Simone. And it gave me this, which I kind of think is pretty awesome. Because it, it already kind of prioritizes and exaggerates certain things that might be helpful to me in my painting. So ways of leveraging the technology. And then I also downloaded a bunch of other stylistic references that I'm interested in, whether they're for colors or for textures, that I might integrate into this digital painting. This was another AI-generated prompt. And I just liked the color palette I got from it. So AI can just give you, give you more. And basically, this is a post from an artist who did a painting of Nina Simone, right? But that's all physical painting. That's oil paint on linen. And I want to do it with pixels. Okay, so how do we get started? So the first thing we're going to do is just look at the assignment. And we want to understand how digital painting is different than digital coloring. Whether we're doing animals, whether we're doing people, there are lots of examples you can look at and lots of past demos. So if you're going for very representational likeness and not that abstracted, like this digital painting of Beyonce as Nefertiti from the New Kingdom Egyptian era of the Amar Armana period, um, then you're really going to want to start with a structured sketch right? Understanding where the anatomy falls. You might even, like it looks like this artist did, take the photo reference and then what's called rotoscope on top of it. Paint on top of the photo to make sure your composition's right. But it wouldn't be a digital painting if you still had the photo as part of it at the end. So by the end of rotoscoping, you need to turn off that photo completely and still have all the pixels be generated by you. The problem with it is, just like this painting, it can look really stiff because every decision is generated from the lighting, the composition, the oddities of that photograph. I have some slides for you that explain all the different approaches to digital painting. We'll go through those quickly. The other approach, so this is, this is the approach kind of like the Beyonce. If you weren't going to rotoscope and you wanted to sketch, you would first do a very kind of targeted uh, understanding of the, the facial structure and the proportions. And then you would build shapes on top of it. And those lines can be very soft edged, they can be hard edged, but this is not digital coloring because we are not coloring behind the lines, we're coloring on top of a sketch. 
Or you can do what this approach is called, which I call speed painting. And that's where you start with shape-based strokes. And that's a lot how, how kind of faster painters work. Instead of sketching with charcoal first or pencil first, you just kind of put down loose shapes and then you slowly refine those shapes into your finished painting. You can also go more graphically and more out there with your stylizations. Like I love these, uh, this final digital painting, you know, from these kind of concept sketches and photo references. Here are some past student examples. This student painted digitally and then used the, the filter, which is called plastic wrap, and some of the settings on that filter to make it look like it's thick, built up paint, almost like wax that's melted. And this student used brushes. We're going to create our own brushes uh, to imitate the look of watercolor. Right. So digital can do it all. You just need to have kind of a vision for what you want. So how do we get started? Well, let's look at those exhaustive examples. So for digital coloring, we looked at Wonder Woman a lot. Here is a digital painting of Wonder Woman. And you'll see that there are no clean, there's no clean line art. There's just a sketch and then that's built up on top of and then refined and refined by shapes and color and, and tones. There are handouts that are found in the links page that can help as well. So if you go to links, you'll see that there is a digital coloring and painting handout. You can download them. And that can be useful to you. And this is some of what that handout shows. These are kind of the basic approaches I want you to think about. You can start just with sketched shapes and color and then refine from there. And these are both examples that end with photorealistic digital paintings of fruit. Or you can start with a line sketch, not clean line, and then build up from there. What's great about digital painting, unlike traditional painting, is you can erase at any time. You know, no pixels are permanent. You can go for something that's more representational, that matches your photo. You can go with something that really stylizes, stylizes your photo. That would be abstraction. You can even stylize it to the point where it becomes not recognizable at all which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but what's fun about digital art is then you can kind of composite those different approaches together. So this was my final portrait of, of the author, James Joyce. And I first painted it like this and then started playing with stripping away certain layers, which is a way I like to work. So tips and tricks, pay attention to detail, block your colors, and to grab color while in brush mode, you hold down the Option Alt key and then release when on the right color. You can steal color from anything that's also open in Photoshop, which is why it's nice to have stylistic references, not just photo references. So this is a student example. And it might be what your process can look like. Digital painting takes time, roughly about the same amount of time it takes to do a traditional painting, just with less mess right? and less dried paint in your brush. But the advantages of it are like that, where you can at any time use your compositing skills of transforming, warping, rotating, <laughs> flipping, to kind of see if your approach is working. And you can change gears at any time, which this student did many times in the process. And then this is that same student doing a self-portrait. And it's fun to do a self-portrait because you're willing to abstract and play with things like color and proportion for yourself that you might not do for a relative. Right? But this is just to experiment with these techniques. We had a lot of presentations on concept artists, setting design, character design. Um, a lot of digital painting was showcased in the artworks that you wanted to showcase in your presentations. And digital painting is a large part of that because it can always be done over the top, over the top of photography, over the top of photo composites and concept work to get exactly what you want. Sometimes I'm showing you these. I, I, my, my kids love dragons and Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm using a lot of dragon concept art examples. 
but you can actually have digital painting